Arch Linux. Just mentioning the name in Linux circles sparks debates, ignites passions and triggers a thousand I use Arch by the way memes. But what makes this distribution so special and yes, so meme worthy that people are genuinely passionate about it? Today we are diving deep into Arch, the installation process that's become legendary, the endless customization possibilities, gaming performance and why this distro creates such a love-hate relationships among users. Let's break it down. Welcome to the Unboxing OS series where we explain so you can explore. Let's address the elephant in the room. Arch's manual installation, unlike Ubuntu or Mint where you click next a few times, Arch gives you a terminal prompt and a wiki. That's it. No hand-holding here. First, you boot from the live USB. You're greeted by a command line. No GUI installer, you'll partition your drives manually using tools like fdisk or cfdisk. Get this wrong and well, backups are your friend. You do have backups, right? Then format those partitions, ext4, butterfs, whatever you prefer. If you don't know what you prefer, good luck. <laughs> Next comes Packstrap. Installing the base system, you're literally choosing which packages form your operating system's foundation. It's kind of like building IKEA furniture, except the instructions are extremely detailed, but assume you know what a hex key is. Trust me guys, I didn't know what a hex key was. I googled it and hex key and allen keys are the same thing. I didn't know this before. <laughs> Generate. An FSTAP file, chroot into your new system, set your time zone, configure your locals, create your hostname, then bootloader configuration, grub, systemd boot, lumin, limin, I don't know how to pronounce it yet. Anyway, uh, whichever one you prefer, set a root password, create your user accounts, install the network manager because you'll definitely need internet when you reboot and if you miss it, you don't have internet, sad. And you're done. Sort of. The entire process takes anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours depending on your experience level. And yes, you'll have the Arch Wiki open in at least 5 tabs, possibly more. The Wiki is genuinely excellent though. It's considered some of the best Linux documentation that exists even by users of other distros. Here's where Arch truly shines. Choice. After installation, you have a command line system and nothing else. Wanted desktop environment? You install it. GNOME, KDE Plasma, XFCE, pick what works for you. Or go full minimalist with a window manager like i3, BSPWM, or the trendy Hyperland. This DIY nature is Arch's core philosophy. You start with a minimal base and build exactly what you want. No bloatware, no pre installed apps you'll never use. Every package on your system. You put it there. Want a lightwell system that boots in 3 seconds? Install only what you need. Want a feature-rich powerhouse with every bell and whistle? Install everything. The system is your canvas. This extends to everything. Your display manager, your shell, your terminal emulator, even your system services. You're not just using Linux, you're architecting your own operating system. And for many users, this is genuinely exciting. You learn how Linux works, not just that it works. Oh, fair warning, you might find yourself customizing your desktop till 2am because the color scheme isn't quite right. We have all been there, it's part of the experience. Some call it rising and it's surprisingly addictive. The Arch Wiki becomes your go-to resource. It covers everything from basic installation to advanced system administration. The Arch community expects you to RTFM, read the fine manual. But in return, you gain deep system knowledge and the ability to troubleshoot problems that would stump users of more automated distros. Let's talk gaming because yes, Linux gaming is absolutely real and getting better every year. Several YouTubers have tested Arch's gaming performance against other distros and the results are interesting. When properly configured, often edges, edges out Ubuntu based distros in gaming benchmarks. We are talking about 5 to 10% FPS gains in some titles. Why? First, Arch is a rolling release with bleeding edge packages. 
You get the latest Mesa drivers, the newest kernel updates, the fresh Proton versions through Steam almost immediately. On Ubuntu LTS, you might be waiting months. Second, minimal overhead. Since you only install what you need, there's less system bloat consuming resources, no background services you didn't ask for. Third, kernel optimization. Many Arch users run custom kernels like Linux Zen or Linux TKG, specifically tuned for performance. Fun fact, the Steam Deck runs on Arch-based SteamOS 3. Now, to be fair, and this is important, the performance differences in real-world gaming are often marginal. We are not talking night and day differences. A well-configured Pop OS or Fedora setup can perform nearly identically, but the bleeding edge update and optimization options do give Arch a slight edge for enthusiasts who want to optimize everything. So who should use Arch Linux? The Tinkers. If you love customizing, experimenting and understanding how your system works and at a fundamental level, Arch is perfect. You're the person who enjoys taking things apart and to see how they work. The Minimalist. If the idea of a bloat-free system with only your chosen packages appeal to you, Arch delivers exactly that. The Performance Enthusiast. If you want bleeding and software and the ability to optimize every aspect of your system, Arch gives you the tool. The Learner If you want to deeply understand Arch, Arch is an incredible education. You'll learn more installing Arch once than using Ubuntu for years. Not because Ubuntu is bad, but because Arch forces you to understand each component. Who might want to consider alternatives? The casual users. If you just want a computer that works out of the box for browsing, emails, and general tasks, Linux Mint or Ubuntu might be better choices. Nothing wrong with that. Use the right tool for your needs. The stability critical user. Rolling releases means frequent updates, things can occasionally break. If you're running production systems and can't afford downtime, consider Debian Stable or Ubuntu LTS. The time constraint. Maintaining Arch requires time investment. Reading update notes, occasionally troubleshooting, staying informed about system changes. If you need something that just works with minimal maintenance, there are better options. Now, this probably offended a few people, but here's the bottom line. Arch isn't better or worse than other distros. It's different. It's optimized for users who value learning, customizations, and control over convenience and simplicity. Finally, let's address why Arch inspires such passionate reactions. The love. Arch users genuinely love the control, transparency, and learning experience. There's real pride in building and maintaining your system. And the AUR, the Arch user repository, gives you access to virtually any Linux software imaginable, community maintained and easily accessible. The community, despite the memes, is actually quite helpful when you approach questions with genuine effort and curiosity. The memes, okay, I use Arch by the way. This meme exists because some users, definitely a minority but a vocal one, do treat using Arch like a badge of honor. It's become a running joke in the Linux community and honestly, Arch users laugh about it too. Now the frustrations. Some critics see the manual installations as unnecessary gatekeeping when automated installers work fine. The rolling release model can occasionally break things, so it's usually fixable, but it requires knowledge and time. And for many use cases, the extra effort might not be justified. Um, there's also some tension be because a few Arch users can come across as dismissive of easier dish shows. Ubuntu and Mint users just want to exist in peace. Fedora users are quietly doing great work. The RTFM culture, while promoting self-sufficiency, can sometimes feel harsh to newcomers asking genuine questions. But here's the important part. Much of the drama isn't really about Arch itself. It's about a vocal minority. The Actual distributions is well-designed, well-documented, 
and the community is generally helpful when you show you have done your homework. Most experienced Arch users will tell you, use what works for you. Different dish shows serve different purpose. Arch isn't objectively superior, it's optimized for users who value learning. Customization and control, if that's not you, it's totally fine. Linux is about choice. Arch Linux isn't for everyone, and that's completely okay. It's a distribution that demands time, curiosity, and patience. In return, it offers knowledge, control, and a deeply personalized computing experience. Whether you use it, prefer something else, or just enjoy the memes from the sidelines, Arch has undeniably shaped Linux culture. It's pushed other distributions to improve their documentation, inspired derivatives like Manjaro and Endeavor OS, and even in recent days like Cache OS, uh, Omachi, there's a lot of option. It created a community of users who truly understand their systems. So should you use Arch? That depends on what you want from your operating system. The beauty of Linux is choice. Every distro has its place and its community. Find what works for you. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, drop a like and subscribe. And if you do use Arch, well, we probably already know. Just type in the comments, are you charged by the way? <laughs> if anyone else have do use any other distribution, make sure to comment it down below. Be proud of your system. See you in the next one. Bye.